Hey guys, I wanted to come in here to talk about quantum leaping and I'm going to keep it very short because I am going to record a, um, a podcast episode about this, which I think is going to be really fabulous. Um, one of the things that I really want to brought, I wanted to bring forward is the impact of our, um, of our limitations, right? That thought that we have around ourselves, the things in our lives, whether it's money, relationships, anything and the limitations coming from our preconcepts of them because of how we grew up our environment so our parents the people we live around you know always come, I, I, you might you might start noticing this when when you actually pay attention to it because you're going to be activating your reticulum activating system in your brain where you actually start paying attention to things so you see it clearly people around you your parents the people around your parents everybody complains about the same things even if maybe they're not truly affected by those things they're going to complain about them it's the most fascinating thing I've noticed honestly equally I found it very uh, interesting that as I learned about manifesting one of the powerful things that came up was well what is your feeling around the thing you want to manifest and how can you see yourself in a different way in the relation in relationship with the thing you want to manifest right because you have to create a different feeling around this so say you're manifesting money how would it feel to have that money that you are manifesting what if you're manifesting a relationship how would it feel to be in the relationship you want to manifest like you have to literally see yourself in that version and so this really, really took me to the quantum leaping because you're like, okay, but how do I, how do I feel, how do I make the feelings come up of something that I don't have or I haven't experienced? The truth is we actually have experienced many things because in this dimension we're in right now, this 3D dimension, we are very dense, right? Our spirit is sitting in a very dense body. Like you can feel that you're sitting on a chair your feet are on the ground, you are touching things, you're feeling hot, you're feeling cold, you're feeling everything. However, in another dimension, in a lighter dimension, so think about the tree of life as you go up and up and up, the tree of life is not a straight line, it comes across all these dimensions are different versions or virtues of that same spirit. So in another dimension, you would be abundant and that abundance manifests in different things. Now, don't get me wrong. When I talk about abundance, it's not just money. Money is great, but it's not the money because money is a physical thing of this dimension that we give value to. And when we get the relationship right about that thing we give value to, we create situations in our life. We have we take inspired actions in our life to make those things happen. But when we have a restriction around something, when we have a limitation around that thing, then we put a stop to it. We are not able to see that very thing we want blossom because now we see it as a, an effort or there is not enough for something. I was saying to somebody today, there is enough for everyone on this planet. There is enough for clients. There is enough resources. There is enough of everything on this planet. And one of the reasons is, even if I am a health coach, I'm a nutritionist, I'm a yoga teacher, I'm a, um, a development coach for women, there are many other people that are doing the same thing, right? But we all do it in a different way. One, because we all have very different experiences in our life and our experiences shape us, but also our gifts are unique. So when we are working on the uniqueness, when we are working on our gift, one of the very important things to do is to make sure that we connect to that feeling of what we're bringing in this dimension. So when I sometimes learn, share about something that I'm teaching, quite honestly, before even I went on a book and checked it out, I innately knew what I was going to look for and what that thing was because I searched within a different version of myself that doesn't live on this plane and this is why sometimes when we don't listen to our intuition and we try to fight it because we are unsure that we know something we can get into trouble 
and we have to learn a lot of lessons. But truthfully, we know because we have already lived and experienced something very important, so we know. And that version of ourselves is attached to a feeling or feelings attached to that version of ourselves in relations to whatever we are working on, say, again, er earlier I mentioned money, relationships, you are going to bring that version of yourself in this dimension. And as you act upon the situation, you take inspired action about the situation with that feeling that you have experienced in another dimension, so say, the feeling of having this money coming in, this abundance coming in, the, the opportunity for you to feel free that you can do whatever you want, then you're going to manifest it here because you're going to take actions that create opportunities. So manifesting is not just sitting on your ass on the couch and just waiting for things to materialize. That's fairy tales. It's beautiful, but I wish that kind of magic existed. But you have to create your own magic. You are responsible for your own magic because when you are sitting there and you are thinking about all these wonderful things and you are seeing the version of yourself that is already there and you know that feeling of being already there, you are bringing in the magic. That is the magic. So I really want you to focus on the magic and know that you can do it because it's not that difficult. It just takes a little bit of attention and first of all, it takes disconnecting from the limiting thoughts and beliefs that we've grown up with around that thing. Because money is nothing, it's paper really, but we give it power. So when you give it power, don't be afraid of that power. And if fearfulness comes up and you are feeling um, unsure and those old patterns come up for you when it's about money, say, you know, you feel like, oh my God, I can't ask to be paid for my work. I'm not worth it. Talk to yourself about this. Where is this fear coming from? And then be okay with being rewarded for your work. It's taken me a long time not to feel guilty about asking to be paid for my work. But equally, you know, when I get paid for my work, if I'm abundant and I can do what I need to do, I can also support other people that are doing the same thing, right? If there is a person that is doing a new project, I will have the finances to support that person. This is how the circular economy version of quantum works because you are putting that energy into earning your money, then you're putting that energy into sharing a gift with someone else so that you inspire them then to share it with someone else and someone else and someone else. So I think it's really important. And I know that sometimes we just cannot, you know, at that point in time, maybe give something or afford something but equally, if we are actually really grounding ourselves and pay attention to what we can afford in that moment in time and think, hey, you know what? Abundance is coming. It will be coming and you'll be fine. So please pay attention to these things. And I really hope that you have a great day.